So I got Mr. Lou Hay over here. What do you guys think of his drumming? All right. Yes. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. We'll get a little bit more in here. I know we're supposed to be socially distant, but we, we, me and Lou go way back. So, you know, as long as you don't be coughing on everybody. All right. So, <laughs> Lou, uh, tell me about when you started playing drums, man. How did you get this, like, eclectic style? Do you agree with my points about being original and listening to a lot of different types of music? Uh, so, I began... Uh... <laughs> When I began playing the drums, I had a lot of influences. Uh, gospel, I started at church. Um, I ended up in a Caribbean steel drum band. Uh, and so were you playing, playing the steel drums or the regular drum? Drum group? set and also uh, dabbled in the steel drum a little bit. I can, I for a while there, I was able to play a couple of tunes on the on the steel drum. Wow, that's but, so cool. Um, and I was in the go-go band, all three at the same time. So I was playing the church, playing in the go-go band, and playing in a uh, Caribbean steel drum band. Okay. So did you ever have to like cancel a go-go? Like, what what was your nah? Pro- <laughs> I mean, it, it for some some reason it it happened that you know it was just going in. It's always so the go-go gigs was always Friday night, and everything else was around that. Gotcha, and gotcha. Church was always Sunday morning, so yeah. it, those are pretty consistent. And then the steel drum gigs will be Saturdays. So it's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every weekend playing. Um, That's a lot of experience. It's a lot of experience, you know? and it definitely helped me with uh, pocket and and groove, um, especially the the Caribbean. You know, those, when you do, like, parades and stuff with, with those bands, it's, like, just nonstop, just <laughs> straight. Uh, and so is that dance music that you're talking about? Um, or it's what up-tempo. Is it? It's definitely up-tempo. Um Soca because music. go-go so, is kind of dance music, and then right? go-go is I mean, dance music. So, and that's that's an hour, forty-five minutes per set, straight non, you know, nonstop. So, stamina, condition, that kind of helped as well. You know, that helped develop that as well. But um, even though they're kind of similar, they, those are different types of music. So, going from you know traditional gospel for the most part to uh, go-go, at, and at that time it was you know different it was you know socket beats and pocket beats and um you know a lot of up tempo beats and then in the caribbean field you know just in that genre just you know straight drive and so question then so you're playing mostly dance music just just to bring it back to originality how do you stay original when you got people on the dance floor or you, you got in your steel drum band people have an expectation of what it should sound like. So as a drummer, I know a lot of drummers' mindsets are like, how do I get as much stuff into this fill, as much as much stuff into this beat as possible? So how do you what's the what's the like sweet spot between those extremes? Because it, it like you would not have kept that gig <laughs> if you were trying to be too original and trying to just, you know, clutter everything up, right? So like my question, let me see if I can turn that into a question. How do you be original but still deliver what people expect? Well, I think one of your points was about uh, diversity and, you know, diversity of music. And so even though I play three different genres, I listen to almost all types of music. So when you have that, going into these gigs, as long as you, it's recognizable when you're doing cover music. As long as it's recognizable, people seem to enjoy it. But at the same time, your originality really comes out when you're playing your own kind of music. So, like, for example, when I sent you, you know, a couple of th- ideas that were going through my head, it they were it was pulling from a bunch of different places. So right. it wasn't just, you know, oh, I'm going to send you a go-go beat or I'm going to send you a soca music beat. It was like, this is what transpire it's sort of all of that combined that and then and then chop a quarter of a beat off the end just to make it feel like it's in a weird time yep. signature you know? <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so that's really cool so you're, you're not really trying to reinvent the wheel you're you're just you're trying to give the people enough of like what the song is you're still playing the music you're still hitting the hits that need to be there but you're you're working within that framework to do something interesting that people are going to go, oh, you know what? That's just a little bit different, mm-hmm. you know? Right, so, right. Yeah. Because if you it, otherwise, when you play a cover music, if you go too far away from the a lot you know, of bands do that the around here. The song, <laughs> then it's like okay, not that you aren't 
trying to cover the song, but and you you trying to do too much. But the people who are in those venues, you know, they want to play what they want to hear what's recognizable. Yeah. If you make it unrecognizable, now you making it original, almost. But as a drummer, you got to kind of keep that, you know, keep that familiarity. Right. Now, another topic I just thought of here in terms of familiarity, um, like people are kind of scared to play originals in their live show. But one of the things that was really cool, I thought, about uh, when we did uh, gigs with Ambience and Strength and Power is we were always kind of, especially in the last you know two, three years or so, we were putting originals into our sets of cover music. And so... What's your opinion on that? Should more bands do that? Is that allowed? Does it only work on certain gigs? Because I, I would love to just encourage people to, uh, you know, be be more creative and bring more music to the landscape of these genres like R and B and and go go and stuff. I mean, that's how we end up with you know junkyard band, and that's how we ended up with Chuck Brown. He was just starting out to play funk music, and he ended up creating a whole new genre. Exactly. And so I feel like if you discourage original music too much, you're 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 maybe preventing the next Chuck uh, Chuck Brown from coming into existence. So, what's your opinion on originals in your set? Should it be only for certain gigs, or what do you think about that? Um, yeah, I think it is kind of time and place. Um, I think you know, like a if you're a cover band, you're playing a New Year's Eve gig, it's kind of hard to throw in. <laughs> Uh, an original especially if they're slow <laughs> <laughs> but if you're um you know if it's a if someone's just coming to hear your band play you play your you you slide in you introduce it you you kind of build up you, you have to build up your song you have to you know make it about the originality of your song say hey guys you know this is something we we created we were in the lab you know we did our thing we want to share it with you guys at this point here's what it is and you you know you introduce your song and you you own it. It's kind of it's not like you just start oh we're just gonna start playing a song and then we're like what's this? They don't know. You have to build it up. You have right. to build it up and introduce. Well, it. I don't know about you, but I I always have a lot more fun. Maybe maybe just because I'm a composer, I'm a weirdo like that. But I have so much more fun playing originals, especially if it's in a room where not everybody's already heard it before, because there's a there's an intensity to that feeling mm -hmm. when you say it on the mic what's up guys we're gonna play an original song there's an intensity in the room where people can feel it they know they they don't know what to expect right. it's kind of like uh you know it, it's it's like you know you're kind of doing something that you shouldn't be doing but you're gonna do it anyway and like you know everybody's like oh should i prepare to be like like embarrassed or you know you people start you know zipping up their coats and then getting their bags you hear a little <laughs> rustle in the, in the in the crowd uh, but I, I have more fun playing originals because the expectation is gone. Now, don't get me wrong, playing a cover song that you, it's fun for me to play with that expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you have a lick, ba ba, and then you do ba ba ba, right? You put one <laughs> little thing in there, and then you know, one guy will come up to you after the show and be like, "Oh, that that, that thing was so cool." But when a, when you're playing originals, the expectation is there. So do, do you agree with me that when you're playing originals, I, that it's more fun for the musicians because they get to like sort of stretch out and take risks that they wouldn't normally be able to take? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I mean, I think if um, a musician, I, I think it depends on on the musician. Like you know, some musicians... and what the song is too, because <laughs> if you got a song that's real, you know, slow and boring, like that, you don't have a lot of freedom there. But right, right. But yeah, certain musicians that yeah, that's a good. I point. think I think different musicians, uh, you know, some musicians like to experiment, some musicians don't. And I think that's with you know yeah. any profession. You know, it's like certain basketball players like to experiment and be creative. So other ones, my job is to get rebounds, right? And I'm gonna do my job, or you know, some kind of uh analogy like that but you know it's just it depends on the musician but i think most musicians uh like to experiment yeah you know i i think it's a thing where yeah, not everybody's a professional some people are hobbyists some people are composers some people are not 
You know, some people want to be the side man. They mm-hmm. want to be the guy in, in the in the background. And I was in elementary school. I was like, I don't want to act in the play. I want to be the guy like, you know, doing the set design or like drawing the curtains. Like, exactly. <laughs> you know, eventually I, I kind of was like, oh, this is kind of boring. I want to be out there in, the, <laughs> in front of the stage. Right. But only if I'm playing my stuff, you know, right, I, I don't, right. don't want to be out there just like a clone. Like, oh, let me do my best. To, I don't even know who, what impression I could do. Like, what, uh, let me do my best Cat Stevens impression. No. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're, we're about to wrap up here in a second. But I just want to ask you, you still working with the kids? You still doing the uh, – because well, school's like virtual now. Yeah, But boy. you were doing – what were you doing? You were doing uh, some kind of coaching? I teach PE. And, um, okay, yeah, f- physical education. Right. right. And so that's different. So, but but let's tie it back into the into the topic before we wrap it up here. Something non-musical, right? Working with kids, do you find that you have to be like original in your mindset and in your classroom practices and your syllabus when you're working with kids or or does it have to be so structured? I know when I was in school, I always loved teachers who were a little bit unpredictable. They, they were a little bit crazy. What's your experience with, with working and, and teaching kids and trying to always keep it fresh, right? I, I think that's what uh, why a lot of my students enjoy being in my class. That you know, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not, you might get a different Mr. Hey every day. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I think that being original, doing things my way, in a sense, um, as long, you know, and it's kind of like with music, you know, there's, there is a script. Like I said, you uh, when you're doing, I guess, cover music, or even when you're doing an original song, there's a, a format to what you're supposed to be doing. And just an extra note here, you know, or something a little, to spice it up a little bit is what makes you know the class interesting, is what makes the music interesting. So you're playing notes in your class? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, but give, so just like an example, like uh, if you're working with a kid and you're doing like tennis or something how do you like what's a like what do you do in that moment if a kid is just not getting it if they just they just have no idea do you have like a go-to method of like like you know doing a joke or something or a skit or something funny like to get the kid to just be a little bit more like how do you get them to be more it's it's almost confident it's almost it depends on the student just like it depends on the musician right you know it depends on the musician if they like uh you know they want to want to be want to improvise and it depends on the student how to help them through an uh, a, a, a issue that they're, you know, that they're dealing with. If it's you know, if they're frustrated with the learning or, un, you know, unable to grasp a concept, okay, well, let's figure this out together. Let's talk about it. You know, what is it that you have, you know, how are you having issues? So you're not like the, you know, the, the gavel of... <laughs> You know, Mr. Hay. You're gonna do it. Mr. Hay does it this way. You know, right? And you're also uh, relatively newly um, a father as well. So does that method work with the little guy as well? Uh, Not so much. Um, (laughs) When it's your kid, it's a little different, right? Exactly, it's a little different. (laughs) That's fine. Um, But you still, as as a parent, you want the child to grow. So I think a lot of that that the structure overly overly you know being overly structural can uh and in, inhibit the growth process so you want to yeah. you know allow them a little bit not too much but just enough that you can start you know you start to see okay he's going to make what decisions he's going to make so you can kind of help guide him in the right direction awesome so i think we pretty much covered it we went through music we went through uh education we went through raising kids i mean this topic applies <laughs> to everything does it did you have fun, my friend? Oh, yeah, of course. You like the show? Always. What do you, always. What do you, what do you think of the setup? Pretty cool? Amazing. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folk, uh, first, folks. Uh, being original does not just help you in music. It does not just help you in your uh, music career as a producer, as a songwriter, as a, all of that stuff. But it can also just help you in life in general, as Mr. Hay says. Um, so thank you, uh, Mr. Lou uh, no Hay, for being here. Do you prefer Lou or Lewis? Lewis sounds kind of more official. I might start. I might start using that. <laughs> um, also, don't forget to hit that like button if you're feeling our threads tonight. Uh, hit the like button. Share this video with all the musicians that you know. Uh, share it with all the producers, the promoters, the songwriters, the PE teachers. <laughs> share it with everybody you know. And uh, don't forget to turn on notifications if you want to be notified of our future uploads. We're here every single Saturday night. 
at 9 p.m. We're bringing in uh, new guests every week as long as I can get them here, as long as they're available. We're going to have a guest. We're going to do live music. We're doing improvisation. We're talking philosophy, music, entertainment. We're talking music industry, music business, all of that stuff here on the Owen Adams Music channel. So that being said, I think that if we can all, whether we're musicians or not, if we can all think uh, more like an original and stop being such a copycat, that's how you get the money. Yeah.